Hello again and welcome back to the channel. Today, something a little bit different for you. This is the Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challenger's Zangief from Storm Collectibles. So I picked up the Balrog from Storm Collectibles from the Big Bad Toy Store a while back and although I liked the figure, I had some gripes, but I didn't want to just cash out of that line. I thought I'd continue on, grab another figure from the line and see how I feel. And that is this figure. So this is how much I paid for him. He was discounted and even after discount, still very expensive. But as you can see, he is a big figure, a real, real big figure, massive box. Some real nice shots of Zangief in all these different poses on the back. On the side, that original image from the Street Fighter 2 video game. And then here he is. Probably can't really see because of the glare, but he does have plastic wrap. And it looks like three heads and a whole bunch of hands. Anyway, let's open it up and have a look. Okay, so here is Zangief out of the packaging with all of his accessories. And as you can see, he comes with a fair amount, including a screaming head, snarling head, battle damaged head, left and right blast effect hands, two blast effects, left and right pointing finger hands, left and right open hands, left and right chopping hands, and left and right clawing hands. Okay, so Zangief is a big figure. Just for comparison, I have a classified figure here. So here's Mutt, and you can see that he is massive he absolutely towers over him and rightly so not only is he a big character but these figures in the storm collectibles line i'm pretty sure they probably around the seven inch mark so he probably stands at about eight inches being a bigger character and one thing that i'll say straight off the bat these are they feel feel top quality they are expensive but they feel very, very well done. The sculpting is top notch. The paint application is almost flawless. The only thing which I struggle with, and this is gonna be my second attempt, is the articulation, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But what I mean by the, the quality, the overall look is just, it's, it's, it's really difficult to describe if you have never owned a Storm Collectibles figure. They have a particular look about them. It's this real, real nice matte tone, and I'm all about that. I much prefer a matte figure as opposed to a high gloss figure, but it's the quality. Take a look at these sculpts. So let's just pop his head off. And you can see the attention to detail. He looks like he's just walked straight out of the video game. The mohawk, this really nice squared off beard. He even has this high gloss on the eyeballs. So he just has this really, really top notch look about him. The sculpting here as well, so you can see this, the skull underneath the skin. And the second sculpt, let's just have a look at this one. Let's just refer to this as a roaring sculpt. So this roaring sculpt, the tongue and the teeth are all visible. Even the roof of the mouth, if you can see that, it's all well done and it's a separate color. It's all painted flawlessly. The attention to detail is just next level. Again, the high gloss on the eyeballs and this alternate sculpt here is like a snarling sculpt. Again, I can't see any issues with the paint application at all. And then finally, he has this battle damage sculpt. So if you're familiar with the video game, once you beat one of the foes, you have this card with their battle damaged face and they you know, they talk some shit. This is exactly that. And Balrog had one as well, so I'm pretty sure this whole line will have them. And the blood, I remember as a kid thinking, why is his mohawk bleeding? But they've included it here because that's exactly how it was. But it's not just painted on, it's actually sculpted. This blood is sculpted in and it's raised off the actual flesh and then painted over the top. So it has this really, really uh, high gloss appearance to it that doesn't impact the matte paint underneath. And then you can see the blood as well on the bottom lip. And if that's coming through, all here. And if you cover that eye, he has this dazed sort of look. His eyes sort of gone back into his skull. So yeah, he's just got this shit kicked out of him. 
And then in terms of the actual hands, the hands are also done very well. Interesting material, they, it's not a solid plastic, it's like this rubbery, flexible material, which I guess is what you want, because it's, it's gonna be difficult to actually break these. If they were solid, they could snap. If they were too soft, they would just warp. But this is a sturdier material. And these fingers are all, all posed differently, every single one. And if we take a look at some of the other hands, you can see here, the nails are all sculpted in. And they're all this same material. One thing that I'm not too familiar with yet is this one. So these, I believe, are for this blast effect. I may have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure the blast effect kind of fits over that. I'll, I'll look it up and <laughs> come back to that. But these are, again, the same sort of material, but obviously completely translucent in this green. And the actual figure itself, um, one thing that I'll say about Storm Collectibles is they just feel like a higher quality product. They feel high end. They are expensive, but they certainly, certainly do feel like a higher quality product than, say, a um, Hasbro Classified or, um, I don't know, a, a Super 7 Ultimates. Although those are probably similar priced. Let's just pop his head on so it doesn't look too weird. There we go. Now, one thing that um, I'm a little bit nervous about is the articulation. I will go over that in just a moment, but that, that's the issue I had with Balrog. I wasn't used to the articulation, and I think it's more the materials that they use. So again, if you're not familiar with these figures, and I don't know if that's the case with most Storm Collectibles, this is only my second one, but they have a combination of soft, um, rubbery material and a solid plastic. So the head is a solid material, but then this upper shell, this upper torso here, this is that soft, pliable plastic. The cups as well for the shoulders are tough, are solid. This chest hair is all soft, solid, soft, so the pants are all soft, and then the legs, the boots, everything else is all completely solid. And that's what phased me with Balrog. I just wasn't used to that. And when you come to pose them up, you can come a little bit unstuck because they don't work in the traditional sense. If you're used to butterfly joints and pegs and you know hinges, then you're really gonna have to spend some time with these figures just to customize yourself with the articulation. If you are familiar with the amazing Yamaguchi figures, then I would liken it to that. Those are ridiculously articulated. They do all sorts of stuff, but if you're not used to it, it can be completely overwhelming. And this is a little bit like that. It's not overwhelming, it's just different. Anyway, before we get into the articulation, let's take a look at the actual figure. So he is a massive figure. He's a proper beast and he has a lot of heft to him. I just noticed that he's actually got sculpted. What is that? Anyway, it's like a um, three dimensional cube. It doesn't really look like treads, but anyway, it's pretty cool. Yes, yeah, see, already, this, <laughs> this is going to annoy me, but anyway. Paint applications on this is very well done. Everything is this nice matte. See, for the flesh, they've put this darker tone in the muscles, so it actually looks like it's got this shadow effect on it. These huge, huge, ridiculous scars that he has, which is exactly like it was in the video game, all across his arms. So he's got one here on his bicep, and then he has that one there, it's like a star, and another one down here on his leg. He's a hairy boy. His hair is just sprouting out of his boots and all over his chest. Uh, but again, that is exactly what it was like. So, uh, I guess let's go over the articulation. So, one thing to note with these figures, now it could be that all Storm Collectibles are like this, I don't know, but certainly the Balrog figure is. He has this ball joint, or rather a peg, that goes up into the head. But this is actually one solid peg that goes all the way down, and he has like a cup here at the torso. So when it comes to articulation, 
it's not going to work in the traditional sense. You can get some down and you can get some up, but you can actually get much more up if you move the entire peg. And likewise with down. So it does take some getting used to. These cups here are something which really troubled me with the Balrog figure, and I can tell already they're going to trouble me here. But regardless, these are essentially to cover these joints. So it's not a typical butterfly joint, it's just a peg. But you get a huge range of motion all the way back and all the way forward, and then complete 360. There's also a separate joint here, or a separate peg here for the bicep. So you can move the bicep independently. And then he has a single jointed elbow. It looks like a double joint, but it's not. It's a single joint. It's, it's kind of like a dumbbell joint, but inside here and then here. And then they've even put this sculpted piece for the elbow, so it doesn't look too unsightly. And then the peg for the wrist, you get complete 360 and then complete rotation as well. <sighs> okay, so the ab crunch, this is where it's going to get a little bit frustrating for me. So as I said earlier, this is all soft and this is solid. And he has this peg that goes all the way down from here. So this essentially just covers that torso. All of the articulation is going to be here. So when it comes to the ab crunch, you get massive, massive ab crunch. And you could probably even get more if you manipulated it further down. But the problem comes with how it looks at the back. You can see that this is pulling up. So really, keeping it like that, he still gets a good amount of ab crunch. And then moving back, again, he kind of got to manipulate it. He does get a decent amount. He's probably going to get much more as well, but you are going to start to pull this cover off the bottom part of the torso. It's actually going to um, be slightly covered by his mop of chest hair. Okay. And then moving around, he gets a full range of motion. And because this is a soft rubbery material on the pants, it actually works in its favor, you can see. So it doesn't look too bad. And you can get from side to side as well. In terms of the legs, he gets up quite a decent amount. But again, because of this rubbery piece, now I'm not saying that this would have been better if it was a solid piece. I'm sure that Storm Collectibles have done it this way because it's going to be much easier to get the articulation. But you can see it's just it just looks really weird. And particularly like that. We can see you can see where his junk's supposed to be. And it's just this cylinder. So yeah that, that's really really not, not not cool at all. And then for the for the knee he just has this single joint similar to the arm and then the knee is sculpted in. And he can actually get out a decent amount as well. But again, those pants are really, really not doing many favors. It's almost like it should have been a different material here for that. And then he doesn't have a boot cut at all. So you're not going to move it um, between the knee and the ankle, but at the ankle, you do actually have a hinge. Ah, uh, sorry, that's a ball joint. That is actually a ball joint. So you get side to side and back and forth, and then the hinge is on the toe. So you got a toe hinge as well. So yeah, it's it's a bit of a strange one, um, and I don't really know if I'm just not not used to it, and that's what it is, but. You can get a good amount of articulation. You just really have to work on those poses. Okay, so I just checked out uh, a review on Anthony's Customs and he figured out what this was for. I couldn't really figure it out. So this actually clips on to this piece here. So one, 
and two like that and then this hole is essentially the peg for the wrist so these green hands you have it on either would just stick out and then that would be the effect on his hand so he has like this power clothes line I think well whatever it is in the video game and that's what this is it's like this massive massive power clothes line that he does and it has this effect so that's that's essentially what that's for and I'll try and pose him up uh, a little bit later Okay then, so my final thoughts on the Street Fighter 2 Zhang gift by Storm Collectibles. It looks like I'm developing a love-hat relationship with Storm Collectibles. I love the look of these figures. They certainly look like a premium figure, and let's face it, they should be for that price. You get a load of accessories. The sculpting is top-notch. The paint application is top-notch. Everything about it works. The homage to the figure looks like it's just walked straight out of the video game. So I'm all about that. I know there are some cheaper options. I think uh, is it Jada Toys, they're releasing some Street Fighter figures which are very conservatively priced comparatively speaking but um, I just think that the Storm Collectibles figure has something that they don't again it is a bit of a issue with the articulation I just don't know if I'm getting it right or if that's just how it is with these figures I don't know if I can recommend these figures if you are familiar with Storm Collectibles then I dare say you probably already have this Zangief I did want the Street Fighter 5 version but he is going for a lot of money now as I said this guy was discounted on the big bad toy store so I pulled the trigger I do think that I'll continue on I'll pre-order the Fei Long and Blanca from this line but I don't think I'll go back getting the Ryu, Gaio and some of the others that were released earlier because they are now going for a lot of money so there's definitely a market for these they are very very collectible and very sought after but when it comes to recommendations if you've never had a Storm Collectibles figure and you are interested then I would dare say buy one like this that's discounted on the Big Bad Toy Store put your toe in the water and see what you think if on the other hand you are familiar with Storm Collectibles let me know what am I doing wrong here or is this just the way that it is well that about wraps up this review I certainly hope that you have enjoyed it and if you have please do give it a like and consider subscribing I don't do a lot of these reviews for Storm Collectibles but as and when I get them I'll throw them up here so I certainly hope that you stay tuned for that and until then take care